Hi, everyone. This is Dee Morley with the History Bards podcast. Thank you for joining us today. We have the great privilege of welcoming Christine Davis Merriman to the show today with her new series or her series that she's working on. A lot of you fans out there may have read her former book at the far end of nowhere. And um, she has two more books, one that has come out after that and one that she's working on now. So we would love to get to know you and get to know your books. Um, so that people can know where to go and find you and find find out about what your series is about. So can you tell us a little bit about you and, and your writing journey? Wow. <laughs> wow. I've been I've been writing since I was a child. As soon as I could hold a pencil and, and print, I could I wrote my first story, which was about a, a mouse and a cannon. I was a little okay. mouse that was able to push the cannon up the stairs and fire it at some mean man that that the mouse was trying to overcome. So oh, kind of that's so cute. Thing for, for a, a small child to write. Yes. So how old were, we, were you I when you read that? Five or six. Really? Do you yeah. still have it? Yes, I do. Oh, that's awesome. That's really yeah. awesome. And uh, I guess I got started writing in storytelling because my father was a storyteller. He told me stories. And my favorite question was, what was it like when you were a little boy? And uh, the interesting thing is my father was very old. My father was not born until I was born when he was 72 years old. Oh, okay. And he lived until he was 94. Wow. So uh, anyway, I, I, my, I've always wanted to write. I have a, I have a, a bachelor's degree in English major and a French major. And then I went on, I have a, a master of fine arts in imaginative writing fiction from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Uh, that was way back in 1977. Okay. And I, <laughs> I wound up getting mar married and have having a child and, you know, didn't really get to do, I mean, I worked at Hopkins, Johns Hopkins for mm -hmm. 30 years as a, everything from a program coordinator to a writer editor to a senior technical writer. So mm -hmm. I got to use my writing, but not in the way I wanted to. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, creative writing. So yeah. So then I just, uh, um, you know, more recently I went to a workshop and uh, met a bunch of other writers and I, I was hooked up with a, my current publisher who is uh, at Green Writers Press, uh, Dee Dee Cummings. And uh, she you know, published my first book and then she's continuing to publish my series. So the first book came out uh, in 2018. Second book just came out this past October and I'm not sure how long it will take to do it. Usually it takes me anywhere from three to five years to, <laughs> to write a novel. So, well, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. So can you tell us a little bit about the series? Well, the series, I got the idea for a series. Um, okay, well, the series is the protagonist is a young girl called Lissa Powers. So I have to confess that it's uh, autofiction, autobiographical fiction. Okay. And at first, um, uh, so it's about her, the first book is about, it takes from 1950, about 1954, when she's about four years old, to 19, uh, till her father dies in 1972. The second book follows up. So that's sort of her growing up, coming of age, moving right. from downtown Baltimore out to the far end of nowhere in Baltimore County on a, what used to be her grandparents' chicken farm and living in a farmhouse and so forth. And so um, the second book picks up where the first one ends when she does her junior year abroad. And it's not an Emily in Paris kind of story at all. <laughs> <laughs> much, much less glamorous. It's uh, it's about uh, she doesn't go to Paris. She goes to Clermont-Ferrand, which is I don't know if you know is right in the center of France. And mm -hmm. uh, for one year, it was a uh, one day actually one day. It was there is temporarily it was the um, the capital of um, of France when Hitler took over France. Mm -hmm. So for just one day, and then and then it wasn't right for what the Nazis wanted, so they moved to Vichy. But um, so this is the place where she's sent as part of her her college program. 
And she goes all by herself because nobody else is available to go at that time. And so she lives in a dormitory at first and she meets all kinds of people, international and stuff. And then she travels a bit. She goes to Scotland for Hogmanay and she then she travels all over Europe. And this was a time uh, that's no longer exists. Uh, it's a time pre-COVID, uh, yeah. pre-9-11, when kids from Canada, the United States, were taking off and backpacking all over Europe. Right. On a, Euro, a Euro pass in our Bible was uh, Europe on five and $10 a day. Yeah. So it was a wonderful time to travel. So the book takes you through all the different travels and so forth. And uh, um, But actually the theme, uh, you want to know how does this relate to history? Uh, when I start, started writing uh, The Far End of Nowhere, I did not think I was writing historical fiction. Mm -hmm. I thought I was writing, well, I hoped to write something, you know, literary fiction or whatever. Yeah. But the public, I mean, the publisher and Amazon gave it, one of the categories was coming of age. The other was historical fiction. So I thought, I didn't know that I was historical. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently I am. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I call myself a ripening baby boomer because mm -hmm. baby boomers were very impactful during their life because there were so many of us. Baby boom was 46 to 64. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born in 1950. So right now I just joined a senior center and the senior se senior center is booming with boomers because <laughs> we're all <laughs> retirement age. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off the point. So no, um, that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So you you were talking about your your book and how it, re it relates to history. Yeah. Well, the theme the theme of the second book, "Traveling a Slant Rhyme," was based on an idea that I had. It's said from 1973 to 1974, which is just about 50 years ago, and at that time, Watergate was breaking open, yeah. and I kept thinking, "Wow." history is repeating itself and I think even Ken Burns in a speech said something about history rhyming history does rhyme but um it's not an exact rhyme it's more like what Emily Dickinson called a slant rhyme it's rhyming but it's different it's always slightly different so that was the theme of traveling a slant rhyme so um I just uh I don't I'm, I think that's a really good, you know, uh, I, I was wondering how that, because you had told me before the the title, and I was yeah. wondering how that, how that connected to the well, story, and I yeah, think that's and I found, really good. I found it interesting that this 50-year gap, the repetition, it wasn't just, first I thought, oh, Watergate, and now, you know, what's going on with our current elections, but it also, uh, 73, 74, that was when Roe v. Wade was first passed by the mm -hmm. Supreme Court. And now right. this, this past year, it's been rescinded. Right. So uh, it was also um, um, a time when Vietnam was yeah. a big deal. And so anyway, there are all kinds of things that, that, that change, but are slightly different. We're still, yeah. um, we went through the, the Cold War, right? And uh, we learned to to have air raid drills and, and hide under our desks with our coats over our head mm -hmm. for fear of being bombed. Well, and then Gorbachev came along and we, with, oh, that's all over. And then here we are again. Everything seems to be heating up again with Putin, the West versus the East and so forth. So I just find it interesting to think of history in that way so that it's actually something Vi vi vibrant and vital because you can learn from it and and so it's something but this point of view that I tell is a bit different it's not a historian's point of view it's not the what you'll get on you know the news shows and and stuff right. but it's a personal view and, and how this young woman and her friends how they dealt with the situation which might have been things that we're not we were not always aware of all the things that we should have been aware of but we gradually learn over time. Yeah, I think that's really interesting how um, how you related all of that to to her as a as the character as the main character. I'm sure it had like huge impacts on choices and and the storyline and how it developed. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are other kinds of things like, for example, 
Um, just, you know, uh, women's liberation has gone through various stages from, you know, the resurgence of women's liberation back then with Gloria Steinem and Bill right. Abzug and those. Uh, and then we got into the Me Too, and now we seem to be moving backwards a little bit. Uh, and so it's just a constant uh, wave of, of, of history. And I think that's one of the things that makes historical fiction so fascinating um, is seeing not only how it relates to other time periods in history, it, it makes um, no matter what era that you're writing about relevant for even today, right. um, because it just repeats itself over and over again. And, and, you know, showing the incredible amount of um, not only hu stories of humanity, but also stories of, of uh, man's inhumanity. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, certainly. Yes. And uh, well, the interesting thing about this, the town that Lissa goes to in France, it's Clermont-Ferrand. And I don't know if you know the sorrow and the pity. That's where the there was a Nazi occupation and there were Nazi soldiers. Right marching in the Place de Joe, the major shopping place, and very where she lives, where she shops, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and then at the same, around the same time, 1973 in October, when she's there, um, is the um, Yom Kippur War. And now, 50 years later, when the book is released, 19, uh, 2023, we're just getting hit with the uh, Israeli Hamas war. Right. So it's just just a really a very clear yeah. definition. But again, it really it's is. it's the same but different. So yeah. we can't really predict the future, but we can kind of uh be aware of it. Yeah, especially because like you said, of the history, the past often repeats itself and in different ways, like you said. Well, I think that's really interesting how you were able to use that title. And, uh, and relate it to that. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on now? What I'm working on now is definitely a work in progress. The reason I started to do a series was because when I wrote the first book, I just kept going, you know, the character <laughs> and the events kept going. So I thought, uh, the editor said, well, this is too long. So I cut it off and started book two. <laughs> I cut that one off and started book three. So, <laughs> um, so this one is about Lissa's um, first marriage. And she's That's married to a professional, a professional chess player. Oh wow! And uh, he was at one time, which is this is based on reality as well, but it's again it's fictionalized, right. as I say, to protect the to protect the guilty, protect the innocent. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, he is at one time uh, he's a, a, a chess master, and he wins the uh, Maryland Chess Championship. Uh, but anyways, the story focuses on their relationship, which, which to me, in a marriage, there are there are definitely fields of force, fields of influence, and one might be a, sort of dominating at one point in the marriage, and one another. And so that whole play to me is like a, a chess game in some ways. Right. So I was focusing. I'm focusing on that as I develop the theme, uh, and I develop the story. Oh, that sounds really interesting. And it's, it's a love always... story because it really, it really is a love story, but, but it ends. Uh, so. Okay. Well, that's, I really like that you've used that imagery. Um, that sounds really fascinating to, to use that kind of imagery in a, in a book. Um, I like reality that you're one of your characters actually plays chess, but also to use it as a, um, an anal analogy for life. I think yeah. that's really I think some of some of D.H. Lawrence dealt with kind of uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the battle of being married. I mean, it's not necessarily yeah. a peace treaty. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't ex you don't know exactly when that might be coming out. I'm hoping to have it out in a, in another couple of years if I can really focus on it. But I, I've had a bit of a block. I mean, we talk about oh. writing block and it's yeah. very, very real. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how do you try, feel like that you manage that? How do you or get past that? Well, I try to um, switch off and write other things like, you know, my original love was a short story. So I try, oh, I'll write a short story. Maybe that'll get me back into it. Um, and 
I just, uh, the energy, I know the energy will come. And most of all, I just, uh, someone has said, you just need to get your seat in the chair and st start writing. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Um, I think all of us ha have have faced that before about being feeling so blocked. Sometimes it's just a matter of just um, switching gears, like you were saying, going outside or writing about something different. So that's definitely very good advice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up. Stay in. I have a friend yes. who's a published author who says, stay in the game, stay in the game. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the truth. Um, so where can um, listeners who are listening today, where can they go to find your books or learn more about you? Um, uh, I wouldn't recommend my, my author website because it's not <laughs> updated in a while, but uh, you can, I mean, you can go on Amazon and you can go on um, bookstore.com. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to get, eventually I'll go back and get my, my author website up to date because I have to, I have, the second book is not there at all. So it's okay. all my first book. So, um, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll definitely put a link to your Amazon author page and, um, well that, that would be best, you know, anyway, cause people can just then write, go and click on your book and read about the, read the, um, blurb and go ahead and click it to buy it right then. Yeah, and then there are also reviews there. So if you really want yeah. to get an idea of it's worth reading. Of course, review, reviews are kind of deceptive, I think. <laughs> They're very subjective. And so uh, yeah. I was fixing to ask you about that. How did you how do you feel about about reviews? Yeah. It's funny. Sometimes it's a better review than I had thought. And it's sometimes, but most of the time it's like, did they really read the same book? <laughs> I wrote it's, everybody sort of personalizes what they read and they focus yeah. on those parts that jump out at them so yeah. it's very interesting reading reviews you learn yeah. a lot it, you learn a lot but it is very subjective because you know you can't please everybody so there's always going to be you know it, it's going to vary so widely you yeah know. <laughs> I've, only been, I've only been panned a couple of times I have <laughs> The one book, uh, the first book I've done, I did an audio book and I did the narration, right? Uh -huh. and somebody said, well, I tried to read that book, but I she had such a weird voice. <laughs> <laughs> I think if oh I had my goodness. It, <laughs> so I, that's the worst I've gotten. So, <laughs> Well, hey, you know, sometimes um, one star reviews are, are less than, you know, stellar reviews oftentimes send people to buy it even more than the five star reviews. How bad is this, right? <laughs> You know, just because, you know, they want to, you know, I have found that sometimes they're just like, really, you know, really, or, or does this person have a beef against this book yeah. for some reason? Yeah. That so happens. it causes them to like go and want to find out, Check which is, it inter out. it's an interesting dynamic, isn't it? That, that uh, something negative would send somebody to buy something over, oh, okay. It's just another five-star book. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's very interesting. Well, we will definitely put, put your links up on the description so people can learn about you and learn more about your books and go and purchase them. We look forward to um, the new the release of your new book. And everybody who's listening, please don't forget to go out and learn more about Christine and her books, buy her books. And um, we look forward and we wish you much success. Oh, thank you so much, Dee. That means a lot. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Privilege. And to all the listeners out there, thank you for listening today. Please don't forget to just click the subscribe button. And as always, this is Dee Marley at the History Bards podcast. Keep making history and keep listening.